first is the handbook is a great opportunity for whoever the reader is to sort of get to know your organization. Your employees will, will study your handbook. They'll, they'll do their best to understand it. They'll probably misinterpret it. They'll have questions about it. It's not just your employees, though. That there also would be your the candidates for employment who may have access to your handbook or at least some of the policies in it. But it's also the government, and it, and it's also judges, and it's also opposing counsel and the plaintiff who has sued your company. I mean, the concept of like who's going to read that handbook and and use it as an opportunity to quote get to know your company. It's broader than just your, your employees. The handbook also serves a legal purpose. There, there are various federal and state laws that require you to provide notice to your employees as to certain things, and the handbook fills that purpose. And it can be a, a powerful evidence in adversarial proceedings. And by that, we mean Department of Labor investigation, EEOC investigation, lawsuit, class action lawsuit. The handbook can be powerful evidence. It can be powerful evidence used to help you can also be powerful evidence used, unfortunately, to hurt you if the policies in there are not, are not exactly what they maybe should be. There, there's a um, section of the handbook that I think is oftentimes overlooked, and that is, what is the work week? Mimi, can you help us with that, please? Sure. <clears throat> so the work week needs to fully encompass seven days of the week. So it's not your business hours. It's not Monday to Friday, nine to five, whatever it is. It needs to be something like Monday at midnight, to Sunday at 11.59. <clears throat> and it needs to align with your payroll company. So that's important so that when you're keeping track of your time, the employee knows and you know precisely when weekly overtime wages will be triggered. And I, in terms of organization and handbook, I like to have this information clearly written by itself in a separate sentence or a section in the handbook where it's really easy to find because it is so important. I totally agree. I think as a matter of best practice, you absolutely must have this in your handbook. It absolutely must match with your actual practice. And we have to be really thoughtful about it. And it is for exactly the reason that Mimi said, this is how we will know when someone has earned overtime. And so we need to be able to say, if necessary, down the road, there is clarity within our organization as to what the work week is, when it starts, when it ends. And overtime means 40 or more hours of work within that work week. If the 40th hour happens on the first hour or day in the next work week, there's no overtime. So this is this becomes. So if you work in multiple states, what I usually recommend is to have one handbook that will include policies that apply to everybody in the company, no matter where you work. And then separate from that, to have a state agenda that will include policies that only apply to state to employees that work in that state. There's a couple of reasons why I recommend it that way. First, in terms of optics, I think it's better to not let company uh, let your employees see what how much more or less they might be getting the employees in another state. And then in terms of administration, it's easier to do it that way because in states like California that regularly update their laws, if you separate out your policies this way, the California addendum will just need to be reviewed more regularly. Um, instead of having everything into a single handbook that has to be reviewed every single year, by separating it out this way, you can save money because you just have to focus on the documents that you actually need to update.